But by another factor of a thousand, you get to a billion. Carl Sagan's favorite number. In fact, if you bring your chin out and say the word billion, it sounds beautiful. We'll do it together on three. Ready? First, stick your chin out. Okay, one, two, three, billion. Oh, isn't that beautiful? That's just beautiful. <laughs> That's just beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. Billion. That's a fun number. Anyone here 31 years old? Raise your hand. Got to be a few of you. Very nice. In this year of your life, you will live your billionth second. Um, yes, I'm geeky enough to have calculated this. <laughs> 31 years, 259 days, 1 hour, 46 minutes, and 40 seconds. But you have to account for leap days and leap seconds, okay? I'm going to try to make an app that'll do this, but I haven't done it yet. I've been busy doing other things. But I celebrated my own billionth second with a really small glass of champagne. Uh, <laughs> uh, 50 of these billions... Uh, let's see, I think a neighbor of yours, uh, is, he's a neighbor, right, isn't he? He's like, you see him around town, I presume? <laughs> Not, okay. Uh, his his wealth, net worth is like $50 billion, plus or minus. I don't know if you know how much that is. I, I don't believe you know. You don't. In fact, I'm certain you don't, because I'm going to tell you. I will tell you how rich this man is. First of all, it's, I'm, I'm charmed by the fact that the patron saint of geeks is the richest man in the world. That's, that's, a, that's, that's a different world than it was when the richest people were sort of oil barons and steel barons. It's like a geek is the richest guy in the world. That's kind of cool. But 50 bill, I, I did this math because I walk along the street. You know, I, I have a job and I own a home. And I'm walking down the street, and I see a coin in the street. My question to myself is, what is the smallest denomination coin that I'll bend down and pick up? Okay? <laughs> Given the fact that I have a job, I own a home. So, the penny is staying. I'm not getting the penny. The nickel, no, I'm not getting the nickel. Dime, if I'm not in a hurry, I'm picking up the dime. <laughs> Okay? A quarter, well, that's good for parking meters and laundry, plus it's a quarter, right? So I'm picking up the quarter. So for me, the boundary between picking up the coin and not is between a dime and a quarter. So I figured, let me ratio this up to that wealth <laughs> and ask how much money has to be laying in the street <laughs> for Bill Gates to be too busy to pick it up. It's $45,000, okay? That's what it is. $45,000, I said, too busy. Somebody else get that. I'm, I got... That's how rich the man is, in case you didn't know. Here we go. Boom, boom, weightless astronauts left to crack. North Star is the brightest. In the dark night, you can make out millions of stars. Total solar eclipses are rare. Days get longer in the summer and shorter in the winter. Uh, high noon, the sun's directly overhead. Sun rises in the east and uh, sets in the west. The moon comes out at night. And what all these have in common is that they're all false. <laughs> Every one of these is just false. But we've heard them, and we retell them. And we retell them because we assume they're true, because they, you, either you want them to be true, or they feel like they should be true. But they're not. They're not. The first one, what goes up must come down. That's true if you're just human, right? If you're just flesh, whatever you throw up, it comes back. That's kind of